Hi, I'm Rainey Richardson, Director of the Katia Lightweight Engineering Team in North America. I'm Colin Swearingen with the Katia brand in North America. I'm Ryan Benishik, also with the Katia brand in North America. Hearing that we don't have enough ventilators became a common theme throughout the COVID-19 crisis. Knowing designing and manufacturing a brand new ventilator would take way too long, so we decided to create a new component that could quadruple the capacity of each ventilator with the main objective of preserving lives during an acute equipment shortage. So what we did was we rallied a group of ModSim experts that designed and simulated a four-way diverter with an optimized and repeatable design. The life sciences industry team that we worked with also got us the FDA guidance that we needed on an emergency use agreement or EUA. The concept that we created had the intent of enabling use for up to four patients on one single ventilator. The team explored flow optimization methodologies and cap configurations to minimize pressure drop. The project demonstrated fast and scalable innovation and collaboration of the 3D experience platform. So what we're seeing here is the generalized workflow of what we had done in order to optimize this flow splitter. So we start off with a preliminary concept and using tools in the 3D experience platform, we intended to utilize our new flow driven generative designer role uh, to optimize the flow path for this particular design. The objective here was to minimize pressure drop and see if we could get a more efficient um, device here for this particular purpose. So what we're seeing on the screen here is the interface for the application and the work that was done on this flow splitter. So what you're seeing the user do is we created a design space, which is essentially just an, a generalized envelope that is saying, hey, I'm going to explore my new design within this volume. So using some user guided assistance here, I'm able to set up in the flow simulation pretty quickly and you know, utilizing best in class simulation in the background to run and get an optimized result. So once again, the objective here is to minimize pressure drop. So what we're seeing here is once the inputs were defined, uh, we ran an optimization, we're able to get the result. Uh, generate that into an actual solid that we can then run a flow analysis on and then check and validate our design to make sure it met the requirements. Thanks, Colin. So not only did we gather a group of ModSim experts from the CATIA and Simulator teams, we also reached out to our experts from the life science team to give us guidance with the FDA on how we could use certain materials for the flow splitter and also how to get end use agreement during emergency circumstances. We also work with our global affairs team to make sure that we had the right resources and we were working with the right government resources. Thank you, Rainy. Um, so I, what I wanna talk about here is the origins behind this original concept and where it all started. Um, where it began was um, in uh, late March, uh, whenever uh, we had a large uh, ventilator crisis starting, we noticed this uh, post where someone uh, was trying to increase the capacity of a, of a ventilator from one to four using these T-tube connections and a lot of uh, kind of hacked together uh, initiatives uh, to, to make this uh, flow splitter possible. Um, one of the things we noticed uh, was the overall kind of unwieldiness of uh, the size of this. Um, those T-tube connectors were um, pretty large and took a lot of volume and it took a lot of resources in order to make that happen. So that's where we came up with the idea to 3D print the design. And that's where the initial design came from was a much more compact uh, flow splitter that could uh, get, produce a uh, better uh, flow output from the from the flow splitting itself and so that's where this 3d printed uh, design came from some of the technical specifications of it uh, we um, modify that design uh, to match the gdf results um, so the so the uh, surface that was created uh, using our optimized flow design was incorporated into this and then we used um, some other uh, re revisions on this model to make it more easily 3D printable. And that includes the ability to add these adapter caps on to block some of the flow, um, as well as making it uh, thick enough to be easily 3D printable and still be airtight. Uh, one of the things you also notice is uh, this is made out of um, a biocompatible and sterilizable material. Um, that was one of the things we wanted to make sure was that as this thing was uh, having to deal with the high humidity and, 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 a, and a clinical environment, it could still be sterilized and still be safe for use. 
Um, another consideration we were looking at, again, since this is airtight and since this needs to uh, provide the lowest drop of uh, flow, was uh, to incorporate these O-rings directly into the design to provide a uh, good, good quality air tightness uh, on the model and uh, make sure that these caps and, and components are uh, rigidly connected. And again, uh, just a little bit more technical details of what Colin had shown uh, on the GDF content. Um, for four patients, we need about 1.9 liters of flow on the, uh, on the pressure side. And so that's what uh, the clinical paper had recommended um, as, as their starting point. And so that's what we used as our inputs into this design. Uh, one final note is, again, uh, we uh, utilized XFlow as our validation cases to make sure that um, if we decide, if there aren't four people uh, attached to this, maybe there's only uh, one to three people attached to this uh, outlet. Uh, when we close off those caps, we aren't getting a major pressure drop or we aren't getting major uh, flow issues on our model um, whenever this occurs. And so that's where X, uh, PowerFlow helped us out quite a bit to uh, uh, analyze and validate those cases. And just one final uh, slide, really just highlighting the overall workflow of this. We started with our preliminary concept that uh, was good enough to set up a design space so that, that we could then optimize for uh, reducing that pressure drop. And once we got that uh, solid regenerated from the flow field, uh, we did a final validation and used that final validation as our or, uh, second revision of our preliminary concept. Thanks, Ryan. So throughout the project, we really learned how quickly the DESO systems employees reacted rapidly and tirelessly to save lives during the COVID-19 crisis. In the beginning, you know, when we kept hearing there's not enough ventilators, not enough ventilators, you know, like I said in the beginning, designing and, and creating a new one was really, you know, not an option that we wanted to pursue. And the team really brought together their unique skill set and knowledge to collaborate and brought their know-how to the table and really worked hard and to get the right designs. And, and we're not done yet, um, but, but the idea is that they worked hard and, and they they didn't take just, well, let's just try this and walk away. They kept they kept getting it right over and over and over until they got the, the right options and the right answers and the and the right configuration that they were looking for. So they it's really, you know, for future use for a true digital twin of a ventilator, we, we do know that we need to go through the complete system of systems and to get that virtual digital twin of the patient for a living heart and a lung, we need to, we know we need to go further, but this is a good first step and this will help in a time of crisis. And, and if we need to use them and put these in the viral hotspots, we know we can. And with, with the help of the team, we've, we've accomplished that. So, if you do want to contact us, um, we will take your comments on the on this post and the community, or you can contact us at e via email at katia.contact at 3ds.com. So thanks for listening and have a good day.